kind of settle, you know, among among the music community. I yeah. think. Yeah, no, I think that's fair because even when you think of the Ama Pianos, right? Like one thing that I can say about Ama Piano is, I would argue that that, by and large, I I don't know if this it's a kind of few heads that are responsible for it or or what, but mm. I think that they have the strongest mixing and mastering of all African music right now. Like they, yeah, the, the yeah, mixing yeah. and mastering is incredible. Like for them to like pull off I'd those bass lines. And like you know, yeah. it, it's 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 on a whole other level. Like I, I bar none. Like I don't think I've heard any African genre that's like batting at that level. You know, I I don't know yeah. who's yeah. responsible for that, but but it's <laughs> it, it, it's it's pretty impressive. You know, but um, but yeah. anyway, I mean, you know. that's a bit. I mean, just just on that topic. I mean, like recently, I remember we were trying to master one of. I've been making a bunch of songs. Some of them don't see the light of day, but you know. Mm. We do them in, in any case, and his name's slipping my mind. And I'm gonna kick myself right now. But he's a Zambian producer based in SA, okay. and he's been responsible for like one of the biggest songs from like two years ago, you, 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 um, by Shekinah. Ah, uh, main major, uh, which, must be right. Main major, yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. Like the name just escaped me. Mm, mm, but I mean, like I, I reached out to him and said, like, bro, I need somebody to locally to master. And he sent me some some names of like guys who are serious about their craft. But if you've got somebody like that who's got pedigree, whereby he's just done a song now with um, uh, Rouge and Sakodi and, yeah. and all these other international guys. Well, yeah. got Pan African uh, international guys yeah. mm -hmm. of, of good repute. Mm -hmm. We should we should be mining some wisdom and knowledge from guys like him. You know, if he's got the time and and, and he's got the, the interest to, the to push yeah. the the sound forward. You know, mm -hmm. just you know, yeah. No, I mean you 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 point at something that I think is it's one of the things that also made me think about doing this Zambian hip hop history as well as a project that did called One Nation Project. Is I feel that yeah again in Zambia one thing we need to do a little bit more of is um, aside from kind of documenting recording history I also think building platforms as kind of a yeah. common resource and kind of within the context of resources for posterity is something we don't do yeah. a lot of either you know we, we kind of it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's it, there's there's a strange uh, reality where the kind of old guard or whatever uh, D d I guess they're, they're they're so I guess maybe uh, focused on 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 having or um, on basically completing a mission or maybe you know or maybe uh, optimizing for certain things they had set out as goals that I think sometimes yeah. on on mass we forget to kind of uh, institutionalize those things and kind of leave the lessons yeah. in a centralized place that the younger folk can tap into. So I find that in a lot oh, yeah, of areas yeah, in yeah. Zambia, there's a disconnect between old generation and new generation, even in a business, yeah, in yeah. whatever. It's because I think, you know, the, the existing guard is maybe focused on other things. The young guard feels like they're not really cared for. So there's kind of a, a disconnect. So I just think it's something that yeah. we, we need to kind of work on to create these kind of like uh, forums or, or, or pockets of, yeah. of centralized knowledge that posterity can tap into. But, but that aside, Absolutely. I mean, you know, going yeah. back to kind of Zambian hip hop and, and everything, what would you say is maybe a top Zambian hip hop memory for you? You know, having gone through some of these journeys, you talked about, you know, Beats One International, yeah. you, talk, you know, we've talked about the first single, we've talked about the projects. You know, what are, mm. you know, within, the, within this journey, what are maybe some, you know, a few top Zambian hip hop memories? So I think the one that comes to mind now, which has not much to do with me, mm. was in 91 mm -hmm. when UNIP, which at the time was the, the government in power, or yeah. the party in power, uh, acknowledged that the youth connect with rap. Because if you looked, if you watched TV before then, um, the only time you'd see rap would be like occasionally in the, in the sitcom. Yeah. Some dude raps and you're like, whoa, you know, but it, it, it never was a thing. Yeah. But then when UNIP funded a campaign song, Huh. which was a rap campaign song uh, performed right. by Kelvin Sampa, 
uh, now honorable, you know, MC. He called himself MC Casey at the time. Wow. Um, with uh, a full-on dance video, brah, and that was wow. coming during the ad breaks on news. No. So you're way. watching the news, and then here comes a campaign song, and it's dude rapping and people dancing. It's like whoa. So so that I think was um, a, a phenomenal. And, and if you talk to people from you know my age group. They all remember that, including the lyrics. Yeah, wow! <laughs> Because um, you know, uh, yeah, before PF and before all these other parties were funding artists, yeah. that was that was the thing. That was the, the the thing that connected us. You know, moving. You know, so yeah, I'd, I'd say that's the the one. Wow, that's yeah, moment. that's a. And then that's a big yeah, one. I think that was a big one. Other than that, I think the the rap workshop which Beats International held because. Yeah. Uh, you're in the same room with guys who've got a number one hit worldwide, yeah, and man. they're just kind of feeding you guys with information. Um, they're, you know, dressed with sh in shorts and t-shirts, and they just kind of make it seem as if um, superstardom isn't that far mm, that from, far off, you, yeah. you know, they, they kind of, they kind of, you know, um, relate and connect to you. I mean, I was having a slice of pizza next to. Norman Cook. I mean, that's like yeah. crazy when you think about it now. Yeah. And uh, he's gracious enough just to give you as much information as he can. So um, I think those two moments. And then um, if I talk about moments now relating to me, mm. um, there's one moment when Zambia Moto was a big hit back in '94. Mm. Seeing at a bus stop in Chilenje, yeah, like a bunch of kids by a fire, you know, rapping along to the song. <laughs> That, that 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 was like mind blowing. Yeah, man, know, those uh, those you can't replace that shows those. Shows you that something's happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they don't know who you are. They they just kind of independently um, bugging out to to a track that you were involved, uh, that you wrote and, and stuff. So, yeah, I think those. Yeah, that's that's three. I think you asked for one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. The more the more the merrier. The yeah. more the merrier. And there was a theme, I guess we we had t discussed and touched on a little bit earlier, which was this idea that. You know, Zambian hip hop was a bit of an underdog, and you kind of contextualize that. One thing I didn't necessarily ask was: Was there a specific uh, challenge that you might have faced as a as a kind of young hip hop artist and young Zambian hip hop artist? Was there something in particular that you felt uh, you had to kind of overcome to get heard? You know, I guess on the road, especially to this yeah. kind of 1994 single that ended up doing very well. Was there any sp yeah. very specific challenge that you needed to, to, to overcome? Well, you know, the, the one obviously is the fact that at some point you think you can make a living from, from it, mm -hmm. but the systems and the structures at the time, it was impossible. So it's, it's like folly for me to, mm -hmm. at the age of 18 or whatever, mm -hmm. to have thought that this could have been a sustainable thing, you know, yeah. uh, when I think back now. Yeah. But there's a memory that, uh, you know, often comes back to me. So in 95 and, sorry, 94 and 95, a bunch of us rappers and, and groups held these shows at Northmead in mm -hmm. Osaka. It was yeah. like open air shows. One of them, we had like a truck trailer, like there's, there's computers and guys playing music off computers, big speakers. The other year we had a full on band and We organized those, uh, the full story again is in the book, but the memory is this, uh, myself and uh, Muya, Muya who later on became a radio presenter, then later on owned Fresh TV and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Muya and I remember once um, before the show, because we needed people to attend this thing, we had flyers. Mm -hmm. And the struggle that we had with people kind of looking at us like, You, you know when you're giving out, trying to give out flyers and somebody's like sh shooing you away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, 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 it touches you because you're thinking like, we're about to uh, kind of expose you to like a revolutionary thing that might change the music scene. You know what I mean? You're going in like, you know, like soldiers in, in the trenches <laughs> trying to invite people to this show and you're getting all this backlash from people who just kind of like we've got no time for this nonsense you know mm. go shine your shoes young man <laughs> go do this so so yeah there, there, was, there were those things whereby you know you're getting signals from people who are not really embracing what you're yeah. doing and it can be discouraging but at the end of the day you know you you do your thing and the joy that you see on people's faces when you're on stage performing these things um, I think just kind of uh, you know um What's the word? I wanted to say dilutes, but that's not the right word. 
Yeah. But yeah, gets those Vindicates? Feet off here, you know. Oh, okay. It vindicates. Yeah, okay. yeah, well, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Word no. Smith, private no. school man. <laughs> nah. What says Chilulemba? Uh, <laughs> we are both. <laughs> say, say WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The, the oh, pod calling the kettle of black. I was, th- I, was th- I know, man. I feel bad you're, just just having said that. <laughs> you were thinking, nah, it's, it's all in was, good fun. You're, you're thinking I, of? I was thinking about your lyric, man. I also used to be skinny Malink. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. These, these things with, 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 with age and with money. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, exactly. hopefully, we can now put I mean, on like, some like weight you like I'm, you. I'm like straightening this out so you don't see the. <laughs> No, 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 no. Those things are very much appreciated in our culture. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I guess, yeah, no, I guess you kind of spoke to this. I was going to ask you if, there, if you ever felt like there was like a blow up moment where you were like, you know, like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. But I guess that might be the kids in Chilenje, right? Where you're like, wow, this song has done so well. Like, this is so, like, you know what I mean? Mm. In a sense, mm. yes, um, that moment w- was, but... At the same time, it was me looking at these kids in Chilenje, bugging out to the song, yeah. but I'm at a bus stop waiting for a bus to take me to Nyumbayanga. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm broke as hell, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, so you can see the appreciation, mm-hmm. but it's not connecting with what um, your situation yeah. uh, could be, you know what yeah, I mean, as yeah. far as you had mapped it out in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, so fast forward, similar thing happened uh, when um, we put out in Jota. Yeah. I'd be like at a place, I, mean, I remember this moment, in fact, uh, we were at Polo Grill with, no, no, we, 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 were, at, we were at Polo Grill. Yeah, we were at Polo Grill with the late um, Kala Luka Chisulo and, uh, and James Sakala and the guys. And, you know, so he roped me onto the stage and, you know, we did like a little performance. Then the performance ended and we were in the car park, you know, about to leave. And then Kay calls me and says, can you hear that? So I'm like, what? And in the distance at some club, Njota is playing so I'm like what's, what's what's this thing and then uh, and it, because it was so loud you know the polo grill the, the field is yeah uh, exactly just kind yeah. of you know yeah so we drove to that, that club <laughs> to to you know to big up the DJ but there are moments like that where you're just like whoa this 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 stuff is is bigger than all of us you know what I mean like um, especially for guys like us who are in the public ear you know I don't have too many videos out there so when you see people genuinely enjoying the song and they don't care who you are, mm. then you know that you've done something right. Mm. You know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> public ear to the point that at the moment, guys are mistaking me for, for Man Chilu on Radio 4. <laughs> what? Really? So, yeah, I've, I've, okay. got a, I've got a Facebook page which has a bunch of, you know, what, what are we at? Like, I don't know, 30,000 or whatever. But I realized that like a whole bunch of those people are there because they think I'm somebody else. You That's know? So crazy. I'm trying to correct you all, man. <laughs> that is crazy. Cindy in it. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Anyway, that's another story for another day. Another day, day. yeah. yeah. No, I, I guess, yeah. you know, one, one important part of the journey that we haven't focused on so much and maybe we should, you know, use, you know, we don't have a ton of time left on to, you know, take too much yeah. of your time. But, but, you know, you did speak about the disconnect between, you know, the content and the content performing well, but your, you know, potential financial situation. Was that kind of the impetus behind you, like you say, exploring other avenues and is, you know, what was the, yeah. the early, <laughs> the early parts of the journey of transitioning or, or I guess, uh, layering your pursuits into yeah. into the other fields like yeah well no one wants to be a struggling artist that's, that's the reality unless unless you've got a very hippie mindset but um, in my situation I wasn't earning money from rap you know like we be pushing and pushing um, but there was just no money coming in you know and at some point it kind of makes you realize and there's, there's a gentleman called Captain George Lloyd who mm-hmm. used to be like our like an uncle figure you know and uh, he was like really cool to us yeah he at some point um you know d- siri thought i was talking to it so i just seen my siri light up <laughs> i must have said something that sounded like siri yeah. yeah anyway so captain george lloyd was like an uncle figure and i remember him once saying um you guys are very talented but in zambia at some point you're gonna have to get a job where you wear a tie yeah and that was like whoa mm-hmm. I don't want to wear a tie, you know what I mean? 
because because my whole life is about creativity and whatnot. Yeah. So it was, but he was telling the truth mm. for for that time period. Yeah. And so uh, when the radio opportunity opened up, it was kind of like a, a parallel industry to what I was already gotcha. doing. Gotcha. You know? Okay. And so I, I grabbed it with both hands, and I was a salaried employee. And then from there, was still able to pursue other passions. So it was like a godsend opportunity, if you think about. Uh, what I was passionate about, and it just so turns out, like as the years go by, you realize that, you know, there's money in radio, there's money in this, there's money in music, but I, I just haven't figured out, uh, you know, how to, you know, make that happen properly. But then there's money in voiceover, and I'm like, oh damn! So as soon as later on, you know, life happens, you learn stuff, uh, then you just kind of get into the lane that allows you to, to flourish um, and and be able to sort out your responsibilities later on as a family man, and all these kind of things. And then when you do have, you know, once in a while, uh, you know, an idea brewing and you need to get it out, you still have enough resources then to just sure, channel yeah. it to, yeah. to that. So that's kind of, you know. What's become of me? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 man. <laughs> it's a, sense, yeah. yeah, no, it's an interesting thing, man. And and it's, I guess it's an unfortunate reality for, I think, the creative yeah. in Zambia today. I was speaking to some young guys and, you know, and, and not in in any way to discourage them. But, I, you know, after a converse, after a few, uh, several conversations of, of this nature, you know, one yeah. guy said to me, he's like, you know, look, Chanda, he's like, you know, as much as we would all love to focus on product, aka content, aka yeah. music, unfortunately, our ecosystem is not in a place where creatives today have that luxury. So he's like, so unfortunately, yeah. all of us as creatives actually can't, we don't have the luxury to just be creatives. We actually have to figure out how the wider ecosystem is going to work. So so we're going to kind yeah. of have to take yeah. some of the bullets for, for posterity, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. For, for somebody to come along and, and, and actually make product work, you know? Um, yeah. You know, and, and it's just, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's just, I guess, the reality of any ecosystem is, you know, until the infrastructure is solidified, uh, it's hard yeah. for, for precocious success to be a thing, you know? It's, it's, it's you know, Absolutely. you, you got to build the infrastructure first. So I guess we're, we're in the process. And it's the same thing, I mean, with um, even a few of the guys that I know in, in South Africa, very, um, they own studios, they do a lot of post-production for movies and, and uh, TV commercials, etc. But when you dig, uh, you know, a little bit beneath the surface, you realize that these, these guys are musicians, mm. but music wasn't making money for them. And so they moved to doing something else, you know. But on that, you know, as, as we come to a close, I know we have to probably wrap. The thing that you said now is, is I think what you said in that video I referred to where yeah. you were talking about the Grammys, it's about systems. Yeah. And if, if, if systems, if we can have like a system mindset in, in a lot of things that we do um, in our personal lives and so on, and, and you know, in, in the music industry, those systems will allow us to, to, to go beyond where we are right now. And, and somebody has to, to be there then to design these systems yeah. and, and to make sure that the systems work and to test them and so on. Um, the U.S. is as successful as it is because of systems. Systems, exactly. You know, I'm right now listening to uh, a thing in which you should check out, Black Fort uh, from The Roots. He's got a one hour something minute um, thing uh, on audible.com um, called Words. It's, so there's a series called Words and Music, and he's talking about his life. And even when he's not talking about music, he's talking about uh, other systems, um, you know, re related to other stuff. And just realize, like, you know, the U.S. is so good at that stuff. Yep. We can learn, we can adapt, we can uh, localize and make stuff relevant, but we do need like systems to be solid for us to move to the next level, yeah. Yeah, I had a, I mean, with one of the guests, the previous guests, we had a debate and, and I guess we agreed to disagree. His perspective yeah. was that w one of the problems with the Zambian music industry is a content problem. He believed we don't have enough good content I told them I completely oh. disagree. I, I told them I think it's yeah, completely yeah. a systems issue, and and I was like, and here yeah. and here's I was like, here's here's the proof. I was like, 
by and large, I bet you don't resonate with most of the stuff that's coming out of the American music industry right now, right? Like if we take the Billboard yeah. 100 and we look at all the records, I bet you personally don't like most of it. Don't, don't, but, don't. but the fact yeah. is, <laughs> it gets significant exposure and significant, you know, you know kind of yeah. uh, propagation by virtue of the fact that there's yeah. a system behind it. So I was like, ultimately, yeah. I think yeah. the success of an industry has nothing to do with the quality of the product and 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 that's and that's yes. the thing about the creative is the creative we're so married to product that i think we forget that we <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, but yeah, but we agreed yeah. to disagree you know um yeah yeah and i was just like no i i i stand on it firmly that i think these are syst systemic issues but I, I think i think systemic issues i mean i remember this is like you know 30 years ago or something i was on some forum i didn't articulate it as well that time you know because i was intimidated because that thing was being aired across many countries and they just wrote me in last minute to, to speak some sense <laughs> but at the time the conversation was kind of similar to this and i was saying that um if i've forgotten who the artist who was huge back then was but like say say for example uh rihanna yeah if Rihanna recorded something yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, today, here in Africa, wherever I am, I'm going to hear it. Whereas if the guy who lives next door to me recorded something, unless he just turned up his volume loud, <laughs> you know what I mean? The time that that track um, through the systems, through whatever, you know what I mean? It might take, um, you know, a lot longer to, 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 to get to me. But I think it's, 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 it's those things, you know. No, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so I guess on a on a kind of departing note, uh, you know, it's been you know an amazing discussion, yeah. and I think that there's so much more ground we could cover. But you know, I guess uh, that's the thing about life is, uh, you know, I always say is it's it's such a difficult thing to the paradox of life is unlimited possibilities but limited resources you know <laughs> and then i guess yeah, one of those limited yeah, resources yeah. is is time so you know we have to be mindful of that but but i guess you know digging into the journey and digging into the personal story and again in the spirit of leaving this behind for posterity what are some you know one or two kind of key lessons that you'd want to share with uh i frame this question in multiple ways either it could be a younger you mm. or or the yeah or the you know younger you out there right now um who you would like to m maybe be a big brother or mentor for because you not, might mm -hmm. not have had one or you know what i mean so so what are some lessons that you would share uh yeah with with posterity so links to links to the point that i just made just now which i don't yeah. think I, I made so well <laughs> i need to revisit that story mm. but um i think we need to as much as we're passionate about the art side of things. Yeah. We need to kind of just also explore the other elements that make a success. So I said, for example, that, um, you know, when I started out, I didn't make money from music and so I, I changed lanes. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that there are no ways to make money from music. For example, a friend of mine who um, is, is a musician, but he makes bad music for sports shows that go on TV. He makes more money than other guys who are actually vocalizing and releasing albums because there's more money in that. But who's going to tell you that information if, if you don't kind of, you know, scrounge around for it? There are books which talk about um, mechanical royalties versus whatever royalties. We don't know that stuff. And so when somebody brings a deal and, and puts it in front of you, you're signing away without the knowledge. And then before you know it, you're going to the, to the press saying you're ripped off. But you weren't ripped off. You just, you know, didn't take the the time and the the the, the, the you know the, the interest to read stuff, you know. So there are books out there which I think, uh, especially now with the, with the internet being what it is, there are YouTube videos. There, there's Udemy um, and all these other places. Just get as much knowledge as possible, so that even when you're honing your craft as an artist, you're also beefing up the other information that you need to, to move forward. Clive Davis, my last uh, example, um, he's not even like really a music guy. He's like, his background is he's like a lawyer, but he's one of the most successful music executives of our time. Why? Because he's figured out the legal side of things. Yeah. He's figured out like every day, every, every week or every whatever, mm -hmm. he'd get home and, and he'd have the, the, the top I think it's the top 100 billboard songs mm -hmm. and he'd listen to them to kind of figure out like what's going on during that period what's yeah. making songs yeah. hits 
So he's investing his time, he's investing, um, and, and any one of us can, if you're serious about it, do that and just become like a strong uh, musician. And if your time as a musician, you know, is up, or if, um, you know, people aren't interested in your music because the next wave is happening, mm -hmm. then you can be an executive or you can, you know, do whatever it is and com contribute in a different capacity. capacity so yeah. I think we should just kind of like get as much knowledge as possible regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that there's there's definitely some some wisdom in there, and I, I and I can't remember how somebody had phrased it to me, but they say the thing about a music industry is it's not built by musicians. You know, you need yeah. <laughs> a, 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 yeah, whole, yeah. a whole you know I guess value chain of people. You know, you talked about mixing yeah. and mastering. You've talked about executives. You've talked about you know yeah. I guess you know you've talked about publishing lawyers. and sync. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. So I guess, you know, maybe that's one of the problems is there's a high level of fixation on, again, on product and creating the product. But what about all the other aspects yeah, of the value yeah. chain? Maybe that's one thing you Absolutely. need to work on. So, Absolutely. Chilu, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's been a sincere pleasure. You know, I'm glad that we got to have this chat, you know, really, really appreciate oh, it. You, you know, I, I hope people enjoy it and, and really listen and, and heed some of the you know, the one, the stories, the anecdotes, then they check out the book. Make sure you check out the book, guys, Finding My Voice. <laughs> a great read, a great read. I, I'm lucky enough to have a signed copy. Shout out to you, too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Zambian Hip Hop History. Make sure to stay tuned, support Zambian music, support Zambian hip hop, and support everything Zambian. Big shout out to you guys. Subscribe to the channel, like, drop a comment, and uh, definitely make sure to follow our, our guest. I guess it's Chilulemba on everything, isn't it? On everything, exactly, yeah, yeah. At Chilulemba on Twitter, at Chilulemba on Instagram, Chilulemba on Facebook, right? Not man Chilu. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Chilu. Thank you, man. Salute and bless. And thanks so much for all the stuff that you do, man. Like so, so some guys are unsung heroes. You might be one of them, but be rest assured that we are watching, we're supporting, we're cheering you on. Much love. <laughs>